What's up, folks? Today is April 5th, 2020, which also happens to be Palm Sunday. I'm on my way into the office to record a video, but before that, I wanted to give you a preview of what we decided to do to help our community remember Jesus during Holy Week, since we can't gather in large groups. So come with me, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here it is. We decided to make a drive-through Holy Week in our parking lot. I'm standing in front of a scene depicting the celebration that happened on the first Palm Sunday. Here, let me load a picture so you guys can see it. It's kind of rainy outside, so here's a better picture for you. There are six other scenes that depict uh, something that took place during Holy Week. If you're in Cincinnati, you can see it for yourself anytime between April 5th and April 12th. I'll post our address in the description. For the rest of you, I'll make a video later on this week to walk you through the rest of the scene so that you can see it and experience it in some way for yourself. But now it's time to get to Psalm 91, so let's get to the cavern, shall we? All right. Well, in our last Bible study video, we talked about Psalm 23, and today we're going to be looking at Psalm 91. Now, if Psalm 23 is a passage that many people turn to in order to find comfort, especially with all its images of sheep and shepherds, green pastures, peaceful waters, etc., then Psalm 91 is a passage that many turn to in the midst of crisis, because this, this psalm is filled with words like deadly pestilence, terror of the night, and I kid you not, destruction that wastes at noonday. But in this psalm, None of those terrible things seem to matter because it's all about how God protects his people from those things. So it's not surprising to me that during this coronavirus pandemic, Psalm 91 has seen a boost in popularity because everywhere you turn, you hear reports about what this pandemic is doing and what this pandemic seemingly will be doing. And these reports are serious and I can understand why people get fearful as they hear them because people are dying at an alarming rate in some parts of the world. So with all this news, I truly do understand why people are running to this passage in Psalm 91 because the promises contained there seem to offer protection from all the stuff that we see and hear in the news. So with God's help, uh, what I'd like to do is take a few moments and share with you how you can truly benefit from the promises Psalm 91 has to offer. First of all, the most important question that we need to ask when we approach any promise in the Bible is this, who is it for? Now that seems simple enough, I hope. I mean, we don't just walk around trying to benefit from promises made to other people. I think we all understand how weird that would be. For example, the other day while on a bike ride, I passed some friends who were headed to Dairy Queen with their kids. And they explained to me that they promised their kids early in the morning that if they took care of business, they'd take them to go get some ice cream. Now, how weird would it have been if I said, oh, sweet, we're going to go get ice cream? That would have been weird because I'm not one of their children. The promise wasn't made to me, right? It was made for their kids. So while I could be happy for their kids, I have no reason to expect the promise that was made to their kids. And the same is true when it comes to biblical promises. We have to discover who the promises were made to. And when we do that in Psalm 91, we discover a whole lot about this kind of person. It's someone who lives in the shelter of the Most High, who trusts completely in God, who holds fast to God, not out of desperate fear, but out of a love for God. Well, right now, you might be starting to feel the way I did with the whole ice cream situation. You might be starting to realize that you're not the kind of person this psalm is describing because the characteristics don't perfectly describe you, do they? Neither do they describe me. We trust God, but not completely. We're like the words to that hymn that go, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. So at this point, perhaps... Uh, Maybe a little bit of despair is settling in because we do live in a world filled with deadly pestilences and destruction and all kinds of evil. And if we're to understand this psalm correctly, the promise of safety and deliverance 
isn't just for anyone who can pick it up and read it, but it's for those who live in perfect faithfulness to God. And while I certainly don't want to be judgmental to the people who are viewing my video, but I'm guessing that excludes a large majority of those who are watching. So if this psalm is for the faithful, and it's so perfectly difficult to live in faithfulness to God, why is it even in the Bible? Is it there to taunt us or to show us what could have been if we weren't so screwed up? No, I believe it's there to lead us to the one who can help us become beneficiaries of the things that are promised in this psalm. After all, there was one person who did dwell in the shelter of the Most High. And there was a person who did live in the shadow of the Almighty. There is a person whose entire life was a constant experience of saying to God, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Now, of course, I'm talking about Jesus. If you look at the way Jesus lived his life, what you'll see is a picture-perfect image of faithfulness to God. And I do mean picture-perfect. All he did was what his father wanted him to do his entire life. Therefore, it's not surprising that his life and ministry were filled with so many stories of deliverance. For example, when there was a storm on the sea, deliverance. When the crowd wanted to stone him, deliverance. When Satan tried to tempt him in the wilderness, deliverance. He literally experienced his father rescuing him from the constant attempts to do him harm. So in Jesus, we actually do discover that the promises of Psalm 91 aren't just beautiful words, but they're true. God does deliver the faithful from all evil. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, because I'm recording this video during uh, the week of Good Friday, and we all know that Christians all around the, gro all around the globe remember that Jesus was crucified and suffered horribly on Good Friday. Where were the promises of Psalm 91 then, right? In fact, listen to verse 9 and 10. They say, Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, which Jesus did, and the Most High, who is your refuge, no evil shall befall you. No plague will come near your tent. So what's up with that? Doesn't it seem like God let bad things happen to Jesus? And the psalm seems to clearly promise that bad things won't happen to those who are faithful to God, right? Well, actually, it doesn't say that. Listen again. Here's what it said. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. Or I like the, the New Living Translation, which says, no evil will conquer you. That doesn't mean bad things won't happen to you. It means bad things won't cause you to fall. They won't defeat you. This is a promise that God will deliver the faithful from trouble and through suffering. That's what happened on the cross, isn't it? I mean, the cross isn't the story of evil overcoming Jesus, but it's a story of how God delivered Jesus from evil. It's like the words of my favorite hymn, How Firm a Foundation. Now, this is God speaking. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee. I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. See, that's a promise of Psalm 91. And we see that promise realized in Jesus Christ. He didn't avoid the terror of the cross, but he was delivered through it. But let's get back to the reason why we're here. Because if this Psalm is only for those who live in complete trust and faithfulness to God, and clearly that's not you or I. Why should we pay any attention to it? Sure, I'm happy for the kids getting ice cream, but I kind of want to have some ice cream for myself, right? Well, here's the good news. Through Jesus Christ, we can become beneficiaries of the promises of Psalm 91. Now, we're not able to be completely faithful on our own, but he was. And through his faithfulness, we can experience the reality that Psalm 91 describes. Because as we just saw, he lived it already. He knows how to do this, right? He experienced the fullness of Psalm 91 while he was walking around on earth. And now he offers to share that same kind of life with anyone who would simply place their trust in him by becoming his disciple. 
by taking upon what he called his easy yoke. You know what that means? That means you no longer have to cling to the promises out of fear or panic, but you can actually rest on the promises through faith and confidence in Jesus Christ. Again, if you're just looking for a way to avoid all potential problems and live the easy life, you're not going to find it here. But if you're looking for a guarantee that God will be with you through your problems, through your suffering, and in the midst of your sickness, your trials and tribulation, then this psalm is for you through Jesus Christ. So you no longer have to live in panic like many in the world are doing, because through Jesus, you have the promise of the Father's presence. And even if something bad did happen to you, I mean, what better place to be when bad things happen than in the arms of the Almighty God? Well, let me leave you with a benediction that kind of puts a bow on this lesson from Psalm 91. This comes from the end of Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. Our next Bible lesson is going to be a story about how Jesus would have handled pandemic-like situation. It comes out of John 5. So if you want to get a head start, you can head over there and read it for yourself. Who am I to stop you, right? Please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can know when the next videos are released. I look forward to talking to you guys in the future. Keep on praying for me, man. I'm still new at all this stuff. So keep praying for me. I'll be praying for you guys too. Peace and goodness.